Fall perfumes are all the rage right now, since after all, it is fall. But everyone has kind of their own preference for fall fragrances, fall perfumes, things like that. In general, a perfume that is considered a meant for fall is generally one that is spicy in some way. You might think of pumpkin spice or something with cinnamon or something similar. Uh, and in general, uh, such a perfume is just meant to kind of complement the autumn weather. Of course, that doesn't really apply as much if you live in a climate that in a climate that is perpetually warm, like I do. But even so, you could still embrace some typical autumn scents uh, if you feel like it. I tried to figure out which of my available perfumes would be best for autumn, and I came up with five. One of them is the ever classic Chanel number no. five. And you might be wondering why is Chanel number no. five a good autumn perfume? And it mainly depends on the fact that even though it is a floral perfume, it is also a very warm perfume and it does have some spiciness to it, especially as you continue to wear it over the hours. The main thing is the hint of civet that becomes very prominent after a few hours of wearing Chanel, Chanel number no. five. And that natural kind of warmth and animal note, I think goes pretty well with the whole autumn aspect. It's not, it doesn't smell like autumn leaves or pumpkin spice or anything. It's more of a classic fragrance from 1921, I believe. But even so, this is definitely a good fragrance that you could wear during the day and during the evening because it's pretty versatile. When you first put it, put it on, it's more floral, and then as you wear it, it becomes warmer and more, a bit, a bit spicier, a bit richer. So that's mainly the reason why it'd be good for autumn. It could also be good for winter. A lot of fall perfumes are also good for winter. The next on the list is the also classic choice of Shalimar which I only have a sample of, unfortunately, not the entire bottle, but Shalimar is also from the 1920s, like Chanel No. 5. The thing about Shalimar is that it's much smokier. Uh, I would say it's the smokiest perfume I've ever encountered. I have the Eau de Parfum, which is known to be much stronger and much just bolder in comparison to the Eau de Toilette. So if you're not a big fan of very smoky or very rich fragrances, then you might want to opt for the Eau de Toilette for a more kind of everyday fragrance. But the Eau de Parfum still is a very good choice. It's mainly not only the smokiness, but there's lots of spices in it. Uh, I personally detect frankincense, even though that's not... I, I couldn't find any lists that put that as a note, but there's definitely a very resiny, very warm, fiery kind of kind of atmosphere to that perfume. So Shalimar is definitely, I would say, something that I'm sure a lot of people wear during the colder months. The third on the list is a actually another Chanel perfume, and one of my favorites. This is only a very small sample. It's just called Coco, not Coco Mademoiselle. Co Coco Mademoiselle is a very new perfume. I think it was only released a few years ago, but this one was released in the 80s, the mid 80s, I believe. And Coco is a good choice for autumn because it's, it's not as smoky as Shalimar and it doesn't have the civet note of Chanel number no. five but it has its own kind of unique warmth and spiciness with a hint of sweetness. And the sweetness is more of a kind of a rich sweetness and subtle sweetness rather than very sugary or anything like that. It's more of an old fashioned kind of sweetness, which I really like. It kind of encompasses the autumn feel and it's, it's quite strong, so if you put it on, you should probably not put too much on at once and then find out 
what kind of dose you prefer. But other than that, it's mainly the spiciness. There's a bit of, I would say, s cinnamon and similar spices to cocoa, as well as a general, almost maybe something similar to whiskey. Not quite so bold as straight up alcohol, but sim a similar spiciness and warmth. And the next on the list is one that most pe people probably haven't heard of. It's called Spark by Liz Claiborne. So the thing about Spark is that usually if you type in Spark by Liz Claiborne, you'll get a lot of um, Spark for men clone and stuff like that, mainly marketed towards men. But this one that I have is for women. I'm not sure if the male or female version came out first. Um, the female version tends to com come in these very small bottles in comparison to the clone for men, which comes in much larger bottles. This one is a good perfume if you prefer something a bit sweeter, but also still very warm. It is similar to Coco by Chanel, but the main difference is that Coco doesn't have as much sweetness as this one. This is not to say that Spark is uh, exceedingly sweet or sugary sweet. It's not. It, it's close. It does have very strong hints of caramel and, uh, and cinnamon, which of course make it perfect for autumn. But the thing uh, about this, which I like, is that it it grounds its sweetness in uh, some musk. So you do have that car opening caramel note along with some of the spiciness, but then before it gets too sugary or too sweet, it kind of grounds itself in in its own muskiness. So and any overt sweetness fades a little bit, but still remains over the hours. So, and it's very long lasting. It's, it's nice if you don't want to use too much perfume, but you want it to last all day. This is definitely something you should consider. And the final perfume is kind of an older one from 1948. I only have a small sample called L'air du temps, uh, which means the, the air of time, I believe, in French. And this is, I would say it's similar to Chanel number no. five. They are both floral fragrances, and th the main difference, I would say, is that, well, L'Air du Temps does not have the civet note that Chanel number no. five has, but more than that, I would say that L'Air du Temps uh, by Nina Ricci, by the way, uh, it has a, an instant warmth that I don't think Chanel number no. five has. Chanel number no. 5 has uh, more of an immediate spiciness and floral kind of combination, but L'Air du Temps has an immediate, very almost sultry warmth mixed with uh, light florals. And so I, it's not really spicy, but just the core of that warm note makes it ideal for the colder months. And if you want to wear it during warmer months. It's also good because it does have those light floral notes and of course the scent changes the longer you wear it and but throughout the hours it does still maintain that that just kind of foundation of warmth uh, which I quite like. That uh, L'Air du Temps and Coco by Chanel are some of my favorite perfumes. So yeah, all of uh, those five are pretty much my top picks for autumn perfumes, at least for me personally. Uh, and I think other people would most likely agree, since more or less they're all warm and, and spicy perfumes that would go well with colder weather. So if you enjoyed this video, leave a like down below, maybe subscribe. If you have any other ideas for autumn perfumes, you can always leave a comment. And that's it.